thought I'd start out by uh, describing the data and model that went into these results uh, so that you have some background on, on what it is that we use to develop this and what we're talking about. The basis of these results comes from regulatory filings that are done annually for each of the pension plans. Um, we use that data, A, for historical. There is one slide on here that shows historical results. And then also to seed the pension insurance modeling system, which was built for the PBGC, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, so that they have the ability to model things for their use. We actually took that system and then looked at it for purposes of determining how we might be able to project future uh, contribution requirements and the funding of the system going forward. We did a little bit of work to see, to, to evaluate how well we thought this projection was working. Um, and then we also went about trying to set assumptions that we thought would be a good, that would be good or indicative of future experience, our best estimate of those, of that future experience. So, to set a context, in order to give you some background, we start by we started by looking at historical contributions and historical requirements. Um, we looked at the ten years ending with 2009, 2009 chosen because that's the latest year for which we have substantive data on, from these filings. Um, and the actual, con the actual contributions, the amount that sponsors were actually putting into their plans in aggregate averaged about $66 billion per year for the 10 years ending 2009. Um, we also looked at what the minimum requirements were over that period and the absolute minimum uh, was ranged somewhere between nine and 22 billion, it depended on the year. This will all become a little bit more clear when we look at the graph on the next page. Um, the, the other contributions also varied somewhat as well. So this graph shows um, what we found historically. Um, you'll notice the, the red lines, let's see if I can get the pointer, pointer to work here. Uh, the red lines average about $50 billion per year. What, those, uh, what the red bars represent are the minimum requirements for each of those plan years. Um, so I would first note, for those of you who are a little bit more familiar with this, that plan years are a little bit different than calendar years, but um, the average requirement was about $50 billion per year. Um, the actual contributions were significantly higher in several of the years, uh, in particular 2002 and you'll see in 2008 and 2009. Um, I think that that finding is, is pretty remarkable considering uh, what we know of 2008 and 2009. And I think it's pretty indicative when we look at the uh, projection of what's coming. Um, a couple of thing, other things to note about this graph. The, um, it's important to recognize that future contribution requirements depend on the amount of funding that has already happened. So when sponsors contribute the extra amounts in 2002, say, that is going to reduce the requirements going forward. And I think it's important to note that, so when you look at these um, red bars, the heights of the bars actually fluctuate quite a bit, the, the entire bar. But if you look at the darker portion below, those are much more level. And the difference here is that when the, the, the taller bars represent what might have happened if sponsors had not contributed um, the additional amounts in prior years. By contributing those additional amounts in prior years, they were able to create a more level pattern of minimum requirements going forward. And you'll also note that the um, actual contributions have a relatively level pattern relative to the minimum requirements as well. Um, this has to do with the ability of sp uh, sponsors to look forward and see what their requirements are going to be with the help of the actuaries that are working on these plans. 
so having talked a little bit about the past, um, we're going to turn to look at, towards the future. And so we're now looking at the 10 years beginning with 2010. And our findings indicate that there will be a significant increase in the average amount that we expect contributions to be at. Um, the increase would be to about, we're estimating, $90 billion per year. Um, and um, and we would expect that the actual contributions will exceed the um, re minimum required amounts um, in 2010 and 2011 as well. Um, so without further ado, we'll get to this projection. Again, the red bars in this graph are what we project the absolute minimum required contributions to be. They are not what we expect sponsors to actually contribute. Again, we are expecting con sponsors to contribute in excess of these minimums. Um, just to give you some idea, if you, if you look here, the first couple of years, 2010 and 2011, seem exceptionally low, below $50 billion, but we know that they've been contributing uh, upwards of 70 billion um, in the last couple of years preceding 2010 and 2011. So we expect that to happen again in an effort to sort of level the contributions that they're making, level the amount of co the, the contribution requirements. Um, you'll note that the peak year for these contributions is 2016, um, but you know, one thing to keep in mind for these projections, again, is that um, these future years will um, change as we get more experience with uh, market results. They'll change as we find out more about what sponsors are actually contributing. So far, um, I've actually named one big assumption, which is how much sponsors are contributing. Um, there are a number, very many assumptions that go into a projection such as this. Um, we felt it was important to describe at least one of those major assumptions and the effect that it might have. Um, we decided to look at the return on assets since that seems to get a lot of attention and as well it should. It's a very um, important part of the uh, um, projection and experience. Um, so. In order to illustrate this, what we did was we picked um, the best year and the worst year from the past decade and tried to illustrate what would happen if in just 2011 we had that experience. So we went back to 2003, which was the best year for asset returns in the previous decade, and we found that if we applied that to today's portfolio for the, the aggregate system, we would predict about a 19% return for 2011. So that's if they had the best year. And then we also did the same for 2008, which was the worst year for the last decade. And um, applying that to the portfolio that we're assuming, we predict that there would be about a negative 18% return for 2011. Um, doing this, we see that the peak contribution varies somewhere between 100 billion and 234 billion um, in in the future. That's the I'm sorry, the peak contribution requirement varies like that. And then, just as a point of reference for where things are at, as of September 30th, um, our assumed investment portfolio was at about minus 4.5 percent and interest rates have declined by about 70 basis points from uh, the baseline assumptions that we were assuming at the beginning of this year. Um, both of those obviously will have an effect of, of increasing contribution requirements. So now, this is what we found with the sensitivity. You can see that it is a fairly wide range um, particularly in those out years. A couple things to note is, are that uh, a negative return is going to have a pretty significant impact 
it's really going to be piling on to the existing um, challenge that sponsors are working through. And then the positive return will have a leveling effect. Essentially, it's going to be offsetting this hurdle that, that uh, sponsors are working their way through. Um, but, but the big takeaway here is that um, the asset returns can have a significant impact, effect. And we found in the report that, in large part, this is due to uh, there's still a relatively high exposure to equities, in which are volatile. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Don First, to talk a little bit about the implications of this research and um, some of the uh, observations on prescriptions.